Hey guys, so today is Thursday the 15th of August and Caleb is six weeks old today. So we are on our way to his pediatrician's appointment. So as you know, Isaac is a failure to thrive baby and he's been seeing his pediatrician since he was around four months old and he's currently three years old. And his pediatrician recommended for me to do a six week checkup with Caleb just to check that everything is okay and he doesn't end up being a failure to thrive baby like Isaac. So anyways, we're on our way to his appointment and I will update you about everything when we get back home. So we are back home after Caleb's pediatrician's appointment. Before I tell you what happened at his appointment, I need to update you with what happened last night so everything makes sense. So last night we had a really scary night with Caleb. I had a shower and I washed my hair so I was about to straighten it and I know it takes me usually about 45 minutes to an hour to straighten my hair so I wanted to feed Caleb before I did do my hair so Matthew could watch him in case he does start crying or anything then he can attend to him while I'm doing my hair. So I went to check on Caleb and I noticed he was still asleep. It was about three hours since I last fed him and since he has breast milk jaundice we have to feed him every three hours. So I wanted to make sure that I fed him on time. So I was about to pick him up and I noticed his hands. So he usually has his hands hanging out of the blanket and his right hand was completely pale. It was as white as a piece of paper and you could just see all his blue veins in his hand and I just completely freaked out. I started saying his name, Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. And when I say his name loud, or even if anyone talks really loud around him, most babies, they kind of have this jerk kind of movement where they get really scared. And if not, they just start crying. And Caleb did nothing at all. And I just started to freak out even more. So I picked him up and then I noticed that it was going up his arm, the paleness. So I took off his onesie, his jumpsuit, and I noticed it was all all the way up to his shoulder and his arms and legs were completely like limp like it was like jelly like he wasn't moving he wasn't straightening it out nothing like that at all and I just started to completely freak out and I think Matthew noticed and he started to take Caleb off me after we put him down and I wanted to see if he was breathing and usually babies have um respiratory rates I think they're about 40 to 60 um, breaths per minute and I was looking at his chest and I couldn't see it rising up and down I don't know if he was breathing at all or not so I picked him up and I started to rub his chest and his back and shake him a little bit just to wake him up to see if um, he was breathing or not and at that point I was thinking oh crap my baby's gonna be dead. I'm gonna to have to do CPR and I'm gonna to have to take him in the ambulance to the hospital and to get ready to call the ambulance. And about 30 seconds to a minute later, he started to wake up and he was just very, very drowsy. So Matthew took him off me and he just started to hold him and keep rubbing him and keep waking him up. And he could tell I was freaking out. I know I'm a nurse and I know what to do when it comes to other people's kids and other humans and everything. Thing. but when it comes to your own kids I just get so overwhelmed and I just start to freak out like I know what to do but it's just completely a different story when it comes to your own kids I just go into that 
state of shock not knowing what to do and I'm so glad Matthew was there and he was trying to take over as well and doing everything that I was asking him to do so after that he stayed awake for a little bit I didn't want to feed him straight away just in case this happened again and he would just kept falling asleep he was just so drowsy so Matthew decided that he'll take him to the doctors and um, just get him checked out and everything and then um, if I didn't have a pediatrician's appointment the next day as in today I probably would have rushed him to the hospital and I kind of regret not doing it and the whole night I was just monitoring him I know that's what the nurses do in the hospital and I was just doing the same I had an alarm set for every hour of the night and I don't think I even slept maybe if I did sleep it was like 10 minutes at a time if not I don't even think I slept for quite a few of those hours because every time my alarm went off I was already awake 10 minutes before it and then 10 minutes after it as well and then on top of that in between I was making sure I was waking up for his feeds to feed him as well and I was just freaking out because he was really drowsy not waking up for his feeds and usually every other night he normally wakes up between two and three o'clock in the morning morning and he just doesn't sleep he just wants to stay awake and I try and play with him and everything and then he falls asleep around three four o'clock and then I go back to sleep as well so I'm usually really tired throughout the night and he didn't do that last night he was just so sleepy and it was me just waking him up for feeds and I was really concerned about his hand as well the fact that his hand was pale last night and when it did go pale I checked for if there was anything that was cutting off his circulation like if it was around his shoulder or anything if it was his clothes there was nothing that was stopping the circulation for his arm to go pale plus Matthew also thought maybe he might have been cold or something that it was making his arm go pale he was in front of the heater and both his hands were hanging out at the same place so it was definitely not the coldness because it would have been in both arms not just the one so that really really scared me and I was just so worried about it happening again and Matthew and I agreed if it did happen again I was going to call the ambulance and take him straight to the hospital Matthew thought it would be quicker of us driving to the hospital if it does happen again to get him checked out but I said it'll probably be better if we call the ambulance at least they'll be here in a few minutes compared to the five to ten minutes for us to drive to the hospital let alone would have to get all the kids in the car and if not um, I would have to drive by myself plus find parking as well and then get out at the hospital to take him in if I was to go by myself so we thought it would probably be better if we do call the ambulance lucky it didn't happen at all after that it was just a one-off and I brought up everything that happened with his pediatrician his pediatrician was a little bit disappointed in me and thought that I was taking a bit too much responsibility in myself to look after Caleb over the night he said that's what a hospitals are for I understand that as they're supposed to monitor him and I shouldn't stress myself out and I need to look after myself too so we did agree with the pediatrician as well if it was to happen again I would rush him straight to the hospital and get him checked out and monitored properly and um yeah I was very thankful it didn't happen again if not I already had everything ready his bags and everything just in case I had to go to the hospital and plus I was breastfeeding him overnight we noticed he was a bit sluggish with his feeds and when it came to the bottle we do have a couple of different bottles there's only one bottle he's able to drink from properly and from that bottle he wasn't drinking it was just coming out of the sides of his mouth plus he was vomiting quite a few times throughout the night as well and he does have a bit of reflux so we do try and keep him upright after feeds for quite some time before laying him down but he was still vomiting so when I brought up everything with the pediatrician he said it could be a number of things that could have caused this episode he said it doesn't sound like epilepsy or a fit or anything or a seizure because he wasn't shaking he was completely like limp like as in it was like jelly basically no um, movement in his arms or leg he was basically lifeless and it just scared the crap out of me how he was in that state and then me freaking out not knowing what to do even though I do know what to do and um, so 
the, he ruled out that it could possibly be a seizure. He said there's a couple of other things it could be. It could be from reflux that he's having these episodes. So um, this one episode, so it could possibly happen again if it is from reflux, as it's quite common with the reflux to have this kind of um, episode. But he wasn't too sure about the one limb which is the right arm going completely pale he said it usually happens in all four limbs or at least two limbs so either the both legs or both the arms so he was a bit concerned with that as well and then he said if it's not that it could possibly be sleep apnea so um, with babies they can get that which is also some of the reasons for SIDS so he said to keep monitoring him and just make sure I look after myself as well, not staying awake all night, doing this to myself and stressing myself out. And if it comes to this, just take him to the hospital. I need to take charge sometime and just take him to the hospital and let other people look after him. As a mother, we try and do everything we can in our power to look after our kids and we think that we always know better. But I understand I should have taken him to the hospital last night. But either way, I'm happy that we got to go to the pediatrician's office Isaac's, to see Isaac's pediatrician and Caleb's pediatrician now. So he decided to do some further investigation on what could have caused this episode last night. And um, so he's decided to send us for a few different tests. So he's asked to do a head ultrasound just to check the brain to make sure there's nothing wrong there. And he also had a few concerns with his hip dysplasia in case he does have that. So in case he didn't have enough room when he was in my belly that it could have caused some problems with his hips. Um, so I have to do a head ultrasound and a hip ultrasound. So he gave me a referral for that. He also gave me a referral for... Um, so he gave me a referral for a blood test. Actually a few different ones. A few of the hormones. I can't remember what they stand for. I am so tired, I don't think I slept much last night, so everything is just all over the place. So he did ask for a full blood count, um, which is FBC. I don't know what the next one is, it's EUL or EUC or something. And then the next one is CFTS or something. So I'm pretty sure that's a hormone, I can't remember what it stands for, plus calcium and magnesium. So just to check all that in case any of that has caused it. He also has requested for me to do an EEG in case it is sleep apnea just to check the brain activity and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be doing that. So they faxed over the referral and I have to wait for them to give me a call to um, book that in. It does say that children should miss four to six hours sleep the night before the test. But um, I don't know if that works very well with a six week old baby so I have to ask that as well about it so um, that's one of the other things and the last thing is an ECG just to check the heart as well in case there was any issues there so we've got quite a few tests to do and then I'm rebooking an appointment at three weeks time. I can't remember the date, I'm just so tired and everything as I said is just going in one ear and out the other. So we've got that booked for three weeks at 12 o'clock, I can't remember the date. I'm pretty sure it's a Thursday as well. So I've got until then to do all these tests to check everything out. So I'm just really concerned about Caleb. This is the first time it's happened and if it does happen tonight again, so we'll probably just end up going to the hospital. So um, I think that's all I have to update you on with his pediatrician's appointment. No, actually, two other things. They, um, the pediatrician checked his weight. He was actually 4.82 kilograms. So he has gained about one and a half kilos in the last six weeks. So about half a kilo every two weeks. I cannot believe how big he is. I couldn't believe that he was almost five kilos. Jacob and Isaac, they were not that big when they were about a month old. And you can see how chubby he is. He's got all the rolls in his legs. And I'm so not used to having such a chubby baby. Jacob was in newborn nappies up until he was three and a half months old. And because Isaac was a failure to thrive baby, he was in newborn nappies up until five and a half months. And Caleb is six weeks old and he's almost grown out of newborn nappies. Like you can see the big size difference in them. 
and he's just so chubby and you can see that his cheeks are so chubby and he's got all like the double chin and everything it's so freaking adorable and also the other thing he checked was his head circumference which was 38 centimeters so at birth it was 34 centimeters so he's happy with that as we had some issues with head circumference when it came to Isaac with his failure to thrive as well and everything came back fine with that so I'm really happy with how it's growing so apart from that everything is going well um, it was just the one episode last night so we just have to keep monitoring Caleb so anyways I think that's about it for this appointment um, and everything I needed to update you on I hope everything is making sense that I'm talking about because to be honest I don't even know what I have mentioned in this and what I haven't I hope I haven't forgotten anything so anyways I will update you hopefully by his next appointment with all his results and hopefully if this doesn't happen again we can just put this behind us if not I will um, update you with things that happen as it happens anyways talk to you later bye Hello, my munchkin. You need some help? Boy Dash Dash Come on Lanes, good girl. Come on, Liddy. In Liddy. Good girl. Kitana. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>